As he spoke, he whipped tape measure and a large round magnifying glass from his pocket. With these two implements, he trotted noiselessly about the room, sometimes stopping, occasionally kneeling, and once lying flat upon his face. As I watched him, I was irresistibly reminded of a pure-blooded, well-trained foxhound. Knowledge of literature. Nil. Philosophy, nil, politics, feeble, botany, variable, knows nothing of practical gardening, geology, practical but limited, chemistry, profound, anatomy, accurate, is an expert single stick player, boxer, and swordsman. Silverton Audio presents the unabridged recording of A Study in Scarlet. Written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Narrated by Marnie Young. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another great show of AP and TV Media. We have a lot in store for you today. As a matter of fact, this show, this program today is going to be off the chain. Only reason being is because we have something in store for you. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, something that we have all, all of us have been looking for. Uh, uh, and our life. we've seen it in the movies, we've, we've uh, you know, we hear about it every now and then about you know, a, uh, um, from books to movies, okay? Here we have now, if anybody remember, it was uh, Francis Mandewa. Francis Mandewa came on the show a couple of years ago, almost, yeah, almost two years ago, and he brought his book called uh, Friendship, I believe it was Friendship. And what was interesting is that um, it was based off the, uh, he's one of the originals, actually, let me share that with you right now. Uh, that was in the Diamond Mine. If you remember the movie called uh, um, uh, Blood Diamond, Blood Diamond, it, it, it was uh, 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 with Leonardo DiCaprio. And, and um, what was interesting is that when he came on, he was actually one of the originals that was in the Diamond Mines that came from Sierra Leone, which uh, let me, I'm just shortening it down right now. But now get this, not only from his book about friendship, but a screenplay was made, and the screenplay uh, 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 was titled Diamond of Hope. Now, Diamond of Hope, the screenplay, was uh, uh, created by, I think it was Sean Justice. And now we have, not only we have the book, we, book, we have the author, the book, the screenplay, okay, the writer of the screenplay, but now we also have someone with us who will validate uh, uh, the screenplay. She is a, a, a world-renowned, very, very uh, uh, blessed, well, good friend of mine at that, very blessed woman of God. Her name is Dr. Diane Howard. 
She's a movie producer. She's also a, a celebrity interviewer. I mean, there's a, I mean, she has several books out herself. I mean, she has a list of things that are just a mind blower. But I, am, I feel blessed to even have her on the show. Matter of fact, I am so glad to see this moment, this day, this hour that is happening, that now we have a producer who is also uh, 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 somebody that's going to validate a screenplay for uh, uh, Francis Mendewa on his, the new, and we're looking forward to, the movie called Diamond of Hope. So I tell you what, let's get this party started. And we'll be right back after this. occurrences, I think that you'll find today's sermon especially uplifting. I know we have had our loved ones sacrifice in this ugly and trying time. There will be peace again, but do not fall into the grips of darkness. Do not become corruptible. Do not become the feast for death. Weakness is the serpent's plaything. For you will hear the trumpets come down. You will see the fiery sword from legions on high come down. Now is not the time for the lamb. Now is the time for the lion. Welcome back, welcome back. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, without further ado, I would like to bring, uh, um, you know, she, she is blessed, uh, uh, um, Dr. Diane Howard, uh, uh, like I say, a producer and interviewer. Uh, um, it, it, you know what, as a matter of fact, let's get her up on here. Diane, are, are you here? I am here. Yes, yes. <laughs> How you doing? I'm very How well, you thank you. I'm doing well. Uh, yes, uh, you know what, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, I, I share uh, quite a bit, but you know what, I'll let you have the floor. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you today and to support Francis's work. Yes, My yes. My life is unique in that I have lived, traveled, studied all over the world internationally uh, since the time I was a child we actually my father was a military liaison officer to Chiang Kai-shek when we moved to China <laughs> when I was a baby and then we uh -huh. were evacuated from China and then went, went to live in Japan but that was just the beginning of experience multicultural experiences 
with mm -hmm. diverse peoples all over the world and my the beginning of a growing appreciation for the diverse cultures of the world i ultimately went on to study performance studies which is very broad and deep in terms of cultural studies of media and performance at the doctoral level and earned my phd in performance studies at that time i was teaching at the university level i had taught for 25 years radio television film stage every form of performance that you can imagine all kinds of creative performance work with wow. newest the newest technologies so it's been <laughs> quite a, a rich life I, I've been able to live. When I first read Francis's screenplay, mm -hmm. I was particularly drawn to it because of my life experiences. His, his story, life story, and then his book and screenplay has very broad scope. He starts off in Sierra Leone is uh, supported and facilitated by a young Caucasian pilot. They become fra fast friends for life, and um, this pilot comes in and out of his life to support him and facilitate him as he is educated first in Sierra, Sierra Leone and then wants to go to Europe and goes across the Sierra Sahara <laughs> Desert and uh, ends up meeting the pilot again in Europe and then the pilot helps him again to get to the United States where he ends up ultimately supporting people who need support and encouragement, uh, marginalized people in various ways. And so he has been a leg living legacy um, of, you know, Tom's good work in uh, early in his life but it's just a remarkable story and has so many timely relevant themes for today especially mm -hmm. about the the need for unity uh, human yes. unity and human love and support and facilitation um, even um, even with very diverse people so very good it's just a wonderful, wonderful, timely story that I have wanted to support and see made into a, a movie. So I've been encouraging him every inch of the way, but it's a long process to get a movie, especially with the scope of his and that takes in so many diverse locations. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, that is interesting. And again, to everybody, that the, the, uh, uh, the, the movie we would look for, because the screenplay is called Diamond of Hope, okay? Right. And this is a true novel, you know, it's, it's, it's a true story about uh, Francis Mendewa. And, uh, uh, you know, there are barriers that somehow accumulated. And with what he went through, it was a diversity. It, the diversity, you know, it's funny, it's, it's we look at, and I, and I agree with uh, uh, Diane, that it was a, uh, we're looking towards unity. We are right. seriously looking towards unity. And, and the unity is having peace among us, you know, as far as, you know, remember I said there's no, uh, 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 you know, the separation from the discrimination, uh, or whether your color, ethnic, background, you know, this right here, the barriers, the, all that has to stop now. All that has to cease. <laughs> Because you, when you, in the, if you read his book, or, or those of you who have read his book understand that there was a unity because it took the, uh, uh, um, the, the pilot. The pilot was Caucasian, and of course, Francis Day was is, is a, uh, uh, African American, or no, African. Okay, it's very interesting, you know. And yet, the, uh, my hope, what I looked at was the fact that the uh, uh, the pilot pretty much took. Matter of fact, Diane, can I can I say that the the pilot took him under his wings? Well, in a way, so, so, we, think, so to speak. I, I think he came, my understanding is he just he came in and out of his life to support and to facilitate him. Yes, you know, Francis had to do the work. I mean, he he's the one who was bold and courageous and um, persevering 
And I think Tom was more of a facilitator and an encourager, you know, which we all need to be to each other. Very good. My goodness, we're, we're all members of the human race, for pity's sake. And, yes, uh, yes. We need, we need to yes. support and encourage each other. And I, I, I guess all my life I've been so grateful for being with diverse people and feeling so enriched by those experiences my entire life. So uh, it's, it's a godsend and a blessing. You know, our, I think especially Amen. here in the United States, the multicultural diversity that we have is a gift and it enriches all of us so it's just so foolish to let things divide us that are so that is so true no you're right so, so pathetic that and it's just so pathetic that we allow mm -hmm. that um, in our lives when we could just simply be blessed and enriched by friendships with people who have different life experiences yeah that's a very and you see why it should be any more diversity, especially now. Uh, I mean, when I look outside now, and I mean, uh, um, and I, you know, also you know, travel around the world as well. But the uh, looking at the children, that the everybody has a little bit of somebody in them, you know, that, which is really interesting. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that the world is now a big melting pot. Absolutely. A melting Absolutely. pot. And, and we're blessed by that. Yes, we we're are. Right. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know what, actually, what do you think? Should we uh, uh, go ahead and um, uh, uh, get Francis on here? I think it'd be great. Yes, I think so, too. What do you think? Everybody? Yes, yes. Well, I'll tell you what, then. I I'll tell you what, um, everybody. Uh, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our PSA commercial and we'll be, and we'll be right back with uh, 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 Dr. Diane Howard and fr the author and uh, soon to be, um, I guess what you call it, I mean, I don't know what you call it because that's your field there, but uh, 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 for a screenplay of Dying of Hope, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just bring him on the set. How about that? We'll bring him on the set. We'll be right back. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Dr. Howard. How are you? What a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love your work. Thank you. I find it multidimensional, substantive. Thank you. It's very entertaining, but it has a great deal of depth, especially in terms of comic satire, which I find universal. Yeah, and for I sure. I enjoy it for so sure. very, very Thank much. You. Thank you. That's all the kind. I'm looking forward to your book. Yeah. It's coming out. Iris waiting. Yeah. Yes, I know. That's that's more my voice than anything. You know, the movies are are great and Medea is great, but the, but Hires Waiting is is something I'm so excited about because it has really been a, a it's a collection of of stories over the, my life that have helped me. And I was talking about my mother and my uh, uh, grandmother who taught me about God and faith and Christ, and and those are so important to me. So I'm more excited about that than anything I've done in a long time. I, oh, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Although I, I think that all of your work has a positive, constructive influence. Yes, but wait till you read Hires Waiting. You'll see something totally different. <laughs> That'll be really yeah. inspirational. Oh, yeah. I've oh, read yeah. everything I can yeah. on it, but I haven't yeah. read the book yet. So I'm looking, yeah. real looking forward to that. Thank you. Well, tell me how you want that book to affect our culture and our world. 
I, you know, there's so many people. So many people have asked me for advice about how to how did you forgive? How did you move on? How did you get higher? How did you get out of the muck that you came up through? How did you get out of it? And putting all of this advice in the book, in these passages, and things that I've said to friends when they were going through issues with relationships, or or their father or trying to forgive them, uh, all in the book were were they're all there for people to read. And I think there will be seeds of life to so many. I totally. I'm yeah. sure that that's true. Yeah. We all have challenges, don't we? For Every sure. single one of us. For sure. And I think, especially as Christians, if we want to grow, I think the Lord allows challenges. For sure, for sure. So your inspiration is very helpful. Thank we you. We really appreciate it, especially in our dark world in which we live today. You're a bright, shining light. Thank you. That's so, helpful, guys. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> yes. Um, are you ready? Should we go ahead and bring him on? Absolutely. I think he, should, he needs to tell his story. Okay. Francis Mendewa. Come on yes. down. He's like, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. <laughs> yes. How you doing, sir? Thank you. I'm doing well. Hey, we are so proud of you. I mean, this is definitely a blessing. So proud of you. I mean, just to, just to watch how uh, uh, you know, God works in your life from the beginning to the time that you first came on, on the show to the time that you met uh, uh, Dr. Howard and to uh, uh, end with uh, 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 Sean Justice. I mean, God had you planted all the way through down a pathway. You talk about that, that's faith all the way. I mean, that is an enrichment in the story to tell to everyone around the world. And now here we are looking at about a movie that soon will be produced that we're looking forward to, uh, A Diamond of Hope. And, and you know what? Just to see what God has done for you. So you know what? You got the floor. Thank you, Stephen. It was a miracle for me to come across um, Dr. Howard. Yes. You know, without her support, you know, you know, without her pro bono support and advocacy, it would have been difficult for me to even move forward with this screenplay project. Well, my story is a miracle. You know, God works through people. You know, I came from a very, very poor background back in Sierra Leone. You know, you mentioned uh, the Hollywood movie Blood Diamond, starring Mr. Di you know, DiCaprio. Um, you know, I was born and raised in that region. I came from a very poor background. So my memoir book, you know, chronicles my life background. Then I met, you know, a kind and generous American pilot, Thomas Johnson, who comes from a great missionary family. I mean, you know, his family, they still have a great influence on the state of Minnesota. You know, his great grandparents were Presbyterian ministers who immigrated from uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, and they built the first church and school in present day Bloomington, Minnesota. So if I had not come across Mr. Johnson, I would have probably been caught in that bloody war during which, you know, young boys were recruited to commit the most heinous of crimes. So I am so grateful, you know, to be here today, you know, to be alive. And for all of the good things that Thomas Johnson has done for me, you know, without him, I would not be here today. So basically, that's my story. And yes, I published a book, which is a memoir. Thank you for having me on the show two years ago, during which I talked about the book. And now the book has been adapted to screenplay, which is titled Diamond of Hope. Amen. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, uh, we, we definitely love your work. Uh, your screenplay is dynamic. As a matter of fact, would, would you like to tell us a little bit about your screenplay? Definitely. Thank it's you. a story that begins back from Sierra Leone. It's, you know, I was, you know, my life was very bad. I lived mm -hmm. with a very physically cruel cousin who beat me every day. Um, the plan was he was supposed to help me continue my schooling. Yes. But I soon dropped out from school because my mother and two sisters could no longer afford to pay for my school fees. So I began to sell oranges by carrying the orange basket on my head. So one day I met this tall white man when I was selling my oranges. And there my life began to change. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 but you're the person that you met. What's his name? His name was Tom, wasn't it? Thomas Johnson, yeah. Thomas Johnson. Thomas. We, okay. Uh, 
Uh, uh, Diane? Yes. You, you want to add anything to it? You know, I think that it's interesting that uh, there were also some other people who impacted his life there in Sierra Leone as well as in other stages of his life. Yes. The sister of the school, for example, uh, even though they weren't perfect, they played a role. And, you know, mm -hmm. none of us are perfect. That's the other thing that we have to that we have to accept that none of us are perfect. And yet we still can learn something and grow from e each experience. And even if it's a harsh experience like he had uh, with his un unfortunately it was his family members who were extended family who are abusing him but um even the hardships can propel us to move forward mm -hmm. in a new direction right so it yes. is amazing yes. god can work all things together for good um, even the imperfections and um and he takes the good in each people and each person along the way and works it to a greater good ultimately and i think that's part of Francis' story is my observation. Well, the of my story is that God works through people. And uh, you know, right now we are you know, experiencing issues uh, in the United States. My story is a testimony showing that there are good, kind, and generous white people. Mm -hmm. um, I am not hesitant to say this because I have, you know, I have lived the experience. You know, I am the testimony. And so, you know, without Mr. Johnson, I would not be here today. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Johnson was a Christian. You know, he saw a need and, you know, he responded. Hmm. But you know, Fra okay. Francis, I, I also have to say that even with you two guys, um, I've had exactly the same experiences, you know, with people who are not uh, my same et ethnic background, but who have blessed me and cared for me. So um, my goodness, especially when I lived in China and um, had amas who cared for me, for example, you know, and all my life mm -hmm. I've been cared for by other people from very different backgrounds. So, you know, it goes both ways. And that's the lesson yes. we have to learn, all of us. Yes, as a matter of fact, you know, I don't know if you want me to open that one door, that, that door, but it was about the, um, uh, 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 about the, um, you had an experience, uh, 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 Dr. Howard, Diane, you, you had an experience that, that uh, um, I don't know how far you want to, the scope of it that you wanted to mention. It was blessed that a, um, I, I guess it was the African uh, um, uh, Methodist church. Oh, yeah. Which absolutely. a lot of people don't even know. Usually it's here in America, in certain parts, is that they generally classify the, uh, uh, when Africans come over, it's supposed to be Africans into a Catholic, you know, a African Catholic church. Absolutely. But it's very rare you hear African Methodist. And that right there alone had me smiling like, oh, my goodness, yes. Yes, that, that diversity is, is beautiful. It's a beautiful oh thing. And the, the uh, yes, yeah, share us uh, just a little bit, a, a taste I, of your I, experience I with that. I, I am a Methodist, and I, I don't want to go into all the details, but our okay. church is through some really, really big national struggles and recently, and it was the, the African Methodists that came from Africa to a national conference that brought um, direction, I think, the right direction, in my view, to the whole Methodist church worldwide. And uh, they have just been a, a godsend, an absolute godsend. So it, you know, it, re it really does go both ways. And yes. uh, we, just need to be thankful for each other, you know, and yes. um, tell the stories how of how different people have served each of us. And that's it's, what Francis is doing. Yes, it, one thing I, 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 I love about everything, including me involved into the movie, uh, it was the uh, unity in the body of Christ. When, when, when God sets a unity 
the diversity, there's, he didn't say whether what type church, he didn't say whether yeah. what type uh, 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 creed, nationality, origin, he didn't say nothing like that. It said unity. Absolutely. Unity in the body of Christ, just unity. And I was Absolutely. like, wow, that's powerful. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it didn't matter what, what church the person came from, didn't matter yeah. what color they were, we were all together. And, and, and then that is the most important thing to go. So God created the melting pot from the beginning. Absolutely. And I have to, I have to say, in my world of uh, yes. redemptive movies, I, I work with probably the top, what probably the broadest description would be redemptive movies. But I yes. have been so blessed working on movies with T.D. Jakes, with Devon Franklin, with, um, oh my goodness, Denzel Washington. I got to support him. Yes. And Tyler Perry. Uh, oh, my goodness. Those are just highlights of my life. You know, I'm so thankful that I had that that experience. So and then, it, you know, T.D. Jakes, um, for example, mm -hmm. that was Miracles um, from Heaven with Jennifer Garner. And um, we all went to church first, you know, at his, his church. And there was Jennifer on the stage with T.D. With Jakes. And wow. oh, my goodness. It was just the greatest morning. And then we went on to do all the press things that we had to do. <laughs> but, um, you know, golly, mm -hmm. I mean, just uh, I think the richest experience of my life have been with people of very diverse backgrounds. I went I went to high school in Hawaii mm -hmm. with girls that were 80. There was 80 percent Asian girls and the Caucasians were the, the minority in the, the school. But, oh, my goodness, that was they are friends of mine to today, you know, I'm just mm -hmm. so grateful for those experiences. Wow. So it, it, it is sad. And I, I'm going to tell you one other thing, too. As a performance studies professor, I don't want to alienate any of my students who might hear this, but maybe I should put it this way. Some of my best and most talented students were the African Americans, you know, and they brought so much to uh, depth and passion. Uh, intense uh, performances that just were so enriching to all of us. So I just think we just need to love and appreciate each other. That's all, basically. Amen. Yes. 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 And, and I, I tell you what. Um, I, I tell you what. Everybody. Uh, um, we'll be right back with uh, 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 with. Uh, uh, Dr. Diane Howard, producer, and with the author and uh, uh, with his screenplay, uh, uh, Diamond of Hope, uh, Francis Mandewa, right after these messages. Because you haven't told anyone where it is. Give it to me. You're going to show us where it's hidden? You will never find it, sir. We blocked the escape. Where is my son? Tell him where it is. Tell him. My family, my home. I don't lost everything. Sometimes I wonder, will God ever forgive us for what we've done to each other? And I realized, 
God left this place a long time ago. As a matter of fact, anybody know about downtown L.A. and Skid Row, and I'm from Philadelphia. So going into an area like that, it ain't uh, being welcomed in. Or matter of fact, better yet, the churches. The churches, there, there's no more separation because everybody's no. trying to help one another out. Absolutely. So and why I can't we see the good in the people instead right. of keep seeing th this negative feedback of the bad? Right. Okay. Right. You know? That's totally true. What we're doing today is so important. Yes. And, and Francis Mandewa, your yes. book is so, uh, uh, not only just a book, I'm sorry, we went past that now. We, we in screenplays and we into, into movies. You know, so I employed you on that for Diamond of Hope. We're, we're looking at it for Diamond of Hope. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and also that, uh, 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 you know, you have moved a, a mountain, boundaries. You know, that, I mean, that's incredible. And you stayed the course. Exactly. You stayed the course. You got the floor, man, David. Well, I just want to say <laughs> that I don't want to sit down here and downplay the fact that uh, racism does not exist. You know, it's a fact of, you know, what goes on all over the whole world. But mm -hmm. I have mentioned that there are people who are working towards racial unity. And yeah. my story is a testimony to that effect. You know, here was a white man, no more than 30 years old. Mm -hmm. you know, he met me, you know, he befriended me. And as a matter of fact, he was a miracle. You know, you know, he took me under his wings. He spent his money on me. He brought me to America. He paid for my college tuition, room and board. I was absolutely dependent upon this white family. Wait a minute, now this was Tom, right? Or Thomas was it Johnson. somebody else? Thomas Johnson and his family. Okay, so he did, he brought you to America, and then he also uh, uh, got you into schooling. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Mr. Hale. And Mr. live with his family. Thomas Johnson, you know, he transformed my life from the get-go wow. from the blood region of Sierra Leone to, you know, Massachusetts to all the places that I've lived in the United States to going to college and, you know, working for the state of Wisconsin to today. So, mm -hmm. you know, the idea that all white people are indifferent. I don't buy that. I don't. Yes, yes. Very and deep good. down, you know, each and every human being is a fundamentally good body of, you know, Jesus Christ. Yes. And that's so, what Diane said. I'm sorry. And that's exactly what Diane said. Human race. We're all human beings. We are human beings. I had to throw that out there, Diane, because you knew me about that last night or the other day, about us being human beings, being one. Oh, it's so true. And, I mean, really, fundamentally, we have far more in common than we have that's different. I mean, you know. Yes. Of course, my life in by itself, I mean, I cannot talk about my book and on my screenplay without mentioning <laughs> me going through the Sahara Desert. I mean, it's in the book. It's... You know, it's in the movie. 
But that was another testimony you know, in my own life when God comes to my rescue. Mm -hmm. You know, here was I in the middle of the Sahara Desert, the largest treacherous no man's zone desert on earth. And there I was laying down dying. And all of a sudden this stranger came and rescued me. They took me into their house, nursed me back to life. I mean, I was sick with dysentery. I was defecating upon myself. I was vomiting. You know, I was destined to die in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And then comes a stranger. They rescued me. They saved my life. So my life is full of miracles. And I have to be grateful to God for what God has done for me in my own life. And back to Thomas Johnson. <laughs> you know, the man was a very kind and generous person. He was meek and humble. And he came from a very great Christian missionary family. His mother, Virginia, you know, I've asked you know, Dr. Diane Howard to play Thomas Johnson's mother in the movie. Mrs. Virginia Johnson. Okay. You know, Mrs. Johnson's great grandparents built the first church and school in Bloomington, Minnesota. And the house that she was born in today is deemed as the Historical Society of Minnesota. So the house is still preserved which is a whole spectacle of my story. So the story goes, I hope my story you know, inspires people, bring people together, work towards love and reconciliation and forgiveness. Thomas Johnson was, wasn't, was an American hero. He fought in Vietnam. He was shot down, but he survived. And he was given two purple hearts mm. and one distinguishing flying cross. Now, I did not know about the two purple hearts until his brother, Doug, who lives in Dallas, Texas, told me after I published the book. And Tom Johnson was a man who never talked about Vietnam. I remember his mother saying to me, Francis, he never talks about Vietnam. I mean, the only thing that Tom ever said to me about Vietnam was he was a pilot. He used to fly into combat zones where people are killed and shot down. And, and that was the extent of what he told me about Vietnam. But I can tell that he had a whole lot more inside of him about Vietnam. And so when he met me at age 15, <laughs> it was like just a miracle. And he tragically died at the age of 44, leaving behind a wife and two toddlers. His wife was not Caucasian American. His wife comes from south of the border, from Lima, Peru. Mr. Johnson was a man of diversity. And I hope and pray that my story, when a story is told, it would inspire people to think twice. Mm -hmm. that we are all human beings, that in spite of all of the chisms and the challenges, there are good people in America who are kind and generous. Now, I have to say a word or two about the idea of immigration. Immigration is a complex and sensitive issue that requires a careful balancing approach. Now, I am not an expert on the topic, 
But I believe that if people have opportunities in their homelands, if people feel safe in their respective countries, these people would not risk their lives to come to America or to go to Europe or take it on the high seas on the Mediterranean. Or I'm down here in Central America, I see people moving up north to go to the United States. Yes. Now, if these people, if these families feel safe, mm -hmm. and if they have opportunities in their respective countries, I don't think there will be such a mass exodus of people wanting to come to the United States. Now, on the other hand, Countries that have once been generous and kind to us immigrants, mm -hmm. they themselves have their own issues today. So I just want to throw that out there because uh, it's, it's, you know, I believe that they are still kind and generous Americans who are compassionate, yes. who are kind, and they ought not to be portrayed as indifferent or insensitive to the plights of, of migrants. Amen. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I know we ran out of time, but, um, you know, I, I definitely would like to have both of you back on the show again. Uh, um, and also, especially uh, uh, our uh, uh, producer, uh, um, and interviewer, uh, uh, Dr. Diane Howard, because she has books as well. But uh, we're going to talk about that in the near future. But right now, we are we are definitely blessed to have you, uh, 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 especially in, in faith. You know that uh, Francis, you you've done an incredible job. You are a hope. You are you are the diamond of hope. It's who you are, the diamond of hope for all of us. And also, we give credit again to. Um, Sean Justice and Faith as well to write the uh, 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 the, the screenplay. Right? Yeah, the screenplay. I'm sorry. Thank you. The screenplay. And uh, Diane, do you have any last words? Diane. Yes, I'm just I'm just thinking. You know. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I agree. I, I, what what uh, Francis just shared was really profound. Yes. I, and I think I think that. Um, these issues truly are complex. And I, I think that another mistake that we make is having an overly simplistic response to mm -hmm. such complex and challenging issues. And um, also, I think that we need to major on where we are in agreement and problem solve together, you know, rather than. Um, allowing conflict just to make a very complex situation worse you know very so good. yes um, anyway we can talk about those things again but um, the basic point is is that we all need to work together to solve these problems right yes and uh, work in unity and appreciate each other rather than uh, being divided and making our lives even more difficult <laughs> yes and it's not just difficult for the communities or certain areas, but the, the difficulties within the planet itself. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, yes. But I, I think you're absolutely right about calling it a false light. Absolutely. Yes. And we all need to work toward true light. And uh, of course, for me, uh, the true light is all there in the Christian faith and the Christian values, I agree with you. Christian character qualities, you know, and I think that those of us who are of people of faith um, find those kinds, like all three of us would agree, you know, with mm -hmm. the basic Christian character qualities and virtues that we all need. Amen. So this is a good conversation. Uh, again, uh, congratulations, uh, uh, Francis Mendewa, 
and uh, 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 and Dr. Uh, Diane Howard and everybody. I tell you what, uh, um, we're going we're we're going to close out today, and uh, God bless, and we look forward to seeing everybody next week. How's that sound? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Howard, and thank you, Mr. Miller. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you, Mr. Hill. You're very welcome. All right, everybody, that's a closeout. That's a wrap. Inside my mind don't see Dreams of you and I that just can't be But I can keep them safe and locked away inside In a perfect world where I control it Give me your heart there and I would hold it but I know that just can't be reality But please Don't you wake my daydream Cause it's so real it seems Maybe someday I'll pick my head from the clouds But for now I'll just stay dream If you said to jump, then I will do it Right into the fire and walk straight through it And if you knew I bet that's just what you would say I guess the only 